the 8th Annual SBCC Scheinfeld Center New Venture Challenge, Friday, April 27th at the SBCC West Campus Fabland Forum. 20 finalists are ready to impress our expert panel of judges. New Venture Challenge judges and mentors from throughout Santa Barbara County offer student entrepreneurs decades of real-world experience to help them succeed, such as Natalie Jensak. Julie Sampson and Michael Holliday, who are veterans at advising aspiring entrepreneurs. Past judges identified New Venture Challenge winner Spencer Shulam, who made a strong impression with WeDo, an app to help us all organize our lives better. Who will be the winners this year? Thank you and welcome. Welcome to the 8th Annual New Venture Challenge. Today, my name is Julie Sampson, by the way. I'm the director of the Scheinfeld Center for Entrepreneur and Entrepreneurship and Innovation here at Santa Barbara City College. Today, I am so happy to say that we have 10 teams who became finalists for this pitch competition based on their business plans, and they're going to present to you today their most persuasive eight-minute pitch of their new business ventures. They're going to be competing head-to-head -head in pursuit of over $15,000 in seed money and scholarships. We are uh, very fortunate today to have with us three esteemed judges. Um, you, we have extended bios in the programs that you have, but I'd like to briefly introduce, first of all, Natalie Jonsak. Did I say it right? Kind of. Close. <laughs> she has over 20 years experience in democratic education practices and entrepreneurship and is founder of Youth Interactive, which is an after-school entrepreneurial arts academy that uses education, creativity, and entrepreneurship as a vehicle for lasting social change. Please give Natalie a hand. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Next, more easily pronounced, we have John Richardson who is a proven senior level technologist with over 15 years in, in in-depth experience delivering web-based e-commerce solutions and has experience across a wide variety of business sectors and is also a member of the Santa Barbara chapter of SCORE. John, thank you so much for being with us. <laughs> yeah, okay. And our judges are making it oh so easy for me to remember their names because I'd like to rep to uh, introduce another John, this is John Harmon. He is the founder and CEO of Oil Slick Beach Tar Remover and is also working on a new startup company called Anon Towelet Services that focuses on selling a variety of towelet products to the hotel and restaurant industry. And also, John is a, gradu a graduate of the program here at SBCC. And we so appreciate John's participation. You know, with everything he's learned in his own entrepreneurial journey, he's so uh, focused and deliberate in sharing that with those who are following in his footsteps. So John, thank you so much for your continued support. <laughs> okay then, okay then. Um, we're gonna run a tight ship today. Um, I'm in charge of keeping us on time. We are, we have eight minute pitches. Uh, uh, what will happen is one team will come up. I will get your, uh, your um, slides up on the screen and give you the clicker. We'll make sure the timers are ready, the judges are ready, and then you can start your pitch. You have eight minutes to pitch. You do not need to use the entire eight minutes, however, if you go over, um, a buzzer will sound, and you will need to finish off your sentence, not run-on sentence, just simple sentence, <laughs> and um, then the judges will start their questioning thereafter. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> the first team that we have up on stage, I would like to welcome my Honeybox from San Marcos High School. Hi, I'm Natalie Lee Shipton. This is Cameron Krang and Elizabeth Kravchuk, and we're my honey box. We offer a sweet solution to homesickness. So imagine this. It's your freshman year of college. You just arrived at the dorms. You've unpacked. Your family has left. And you're starting to feel a little bit of something. 
and you realize you're homesick. You miss your friends and family. Now imagine the parent. It's your first child. You've dropped them off at college. You go back to your home, and you realize it's empty. So we created a solution. We keep families connected. We do so through a subscription-based care package called My Honey Box. Here are a few samples. Feel free to look through them. My Honey Box offers all the items your student needs to know you're caring about them. This includes a variety of items such as snacks, toiletries, um, school supply items, college apparel, and more. Now, to figure out what we should put in the box, we offer a survey. So you can fill this out for your child, or you can send them the link, and they can fill it out for themselves. We ask questions like, what size clothes do they wear? What school do they go to? What is their decor style? So then we can find out more about what items to put in their box. This is what makes My Honey Box unique, is we create a hybrid of data and human selection to best hand select the items for the user. So we also offer a note which adds a little personal touch to each box. So a week before we send out the box, we send an email to the purchaser and ask them to write out a note and even upload a photo, and then we'll print it out and include it in the box. So this is our business model. We ask companies to send us samples for free so that they can market to our customers, and then we buy wholesale to keep costs low. Then we have the parents fill out the survey about their child's preferences, we hand select the items, package it all up, and send out a box a month. This is our target market. We target college students ages 17 to 24. What's unique about My Honey Box is we have a different target purchaser, which is mothers, but not limited to grandparents, aunts, uncles, and siblings. This is how we plan to market to the target market. We'll use social influencers. These social influencers have over 1.5 million followers. We also plan to use social media campaigns through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This will help better reach the parents. We also plan to set up at college orientation and drop-off weekends to help better reach the parents that way, too. These are our competitors. You have Birchbox at $10, Suds Club at $24.99, FabFitFun at $49.99, and Munchpack at $24.95. Now, Birchbox is a beauty-based subscription service. Suds Club, toiletries, FabFitFun is a lifestyle and fitness box, and Munchpack is snacks. My Honey Box, while being priced competitively, creates a blend of all these items while focusing on the college student. So there's four different options for purchasing My Honey Box. You can do a monthly, a three-month, a six-month, or one year, and these all include free shipping. So we know there's a market for this. There's 5.7 million subscription box shoppers just in the United States, and 20.4 million college students in the United States as well. And just here in Santa Barbara, there's 46,000 college students. So conservatively, if we just get 2% of those college students in Santa Barbara, that's 920 members. If those 920 members buy six boxes a year at $20 a box, that's over $110,000. Now, our cost to make my honey box is pretty low. It's $9.33. That includes shipping. Times those six boxes, times those 920 members, that's a total cost of $51,000. So in the first year, we expect to make $58,000. So to get started, we're asking for $20,000. This will go towards website development to develop that survey, initial inventory purchase, and those social media campaigns. This is our management team. Myself, Natalie Hay Shipton, Cameron Krang, and Elizabeth Kravchuk. What's unique about us is we are the target market, so we directly understand what the market wants and needs. This is our advisor, Jillian Heckman, and we are my honey box. Um, great pitch, uh, and so f for starting off, um, for manufacturing, are you guys going to uh, fill these baskets yourselves, and then, and then what's, if, when orders come through, what are you going to do as those orders scale, and you guys aren't going to be able to, just you three, fill the baskets yourself? 
we will most likely hire people to fill the boxes, but starting small, I think that we can handle packaging them ourselves at first. Right. Awesome, I think it's a really sweet idea. Um, did you speak to many parents to see how, how they would react? What were their reactions? So we did survey multiple, we did about, we surveyed about 100 parents and, they, and about 80, I want to say 9% of parents that they would be interested in subscribing to My Honey Box because it does take, it's easier for them and that they get to still include that personalized side of My Honey Box to it. And so they're all very interested in buying it. Yeah, care packages are timeless. People have been sending them for years and years. Mm -hmm. So it's something that's never going to go out of style. And did you speak to some of the companies to see whether they would be okay with your idea of taking a sample and then buying them at wholesale and packaging all that together? We did prior research and we know that there are like subscription boxes out there that take free samples from companies. So we know that they would be willing to, especially since we have such a specific target market. Your price point and stuff like that, well, how did y'all settle in on that versus some of your co competitors? So uh, again, we did um, market research. So we surveyed, again, about 100 people, both parents and students, asking what they would pay for it. And then we settled on that $20 price. And did you count in wages for yourselves in that pricing? No, for the first year, we weren't planning on paying ourselves. Mm -hmm. How long do you think it's going to take you to get to the 920 because that was kind of your, mm -hmm. your goal and stuff like that. I mean, how long do you think it's going to take you to? We believe that it'll take us at least a year to reach the 920 members. It's about mm -hmm. 76 new subscribers each month. Mm -hmm. If we attend like all three colleges in towns, like their college orientation week, I think we could easily get at least like 300 parents from each school to sign up with us. Okay, thank you. Just as a as a advice, when you do your business plan please put some money in for yourselves because that makes it sustainable. And if you're getting 76 packages to do a month, for example, mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot of work. So you want to get some return on that, even on your first year. Please welcome Trucker from San Marcos High School up to the podium. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Trucker. So Sally here went to Costco, saw that giant teddy bear, couldn't resist it. She had to get it. But unfortunately, it's not going to fit in her car. <laughs> what does she do at this point? There's only one thing she can do, call Trucker. Our company would come to her, get her giant teddy bear, and bring it to her doorstep. My company has recognized a problem where these large objects such as TVs, couches, and cabinets cannot be placed in these small cars. So I'm here to offer a solution where we will bring an on-demand service that will meet the customer at the place of sale and bring it to their home safely. How do you do this? Simply an app. By downloading our app or calling our business, we, you can order a truck to your location. We'll pile your teddy bear in your car and bring it to your home for you safely. By the survey we have conducted, we have seen that 55% of people in Santa Barbara once a month buy objects that are too large for their vehicles. Our competitors are U-Haul and Meads. U-Haul is known for its extensive paperwork and hard to get trucks. We, on the other hand, offer an easy service which can be there in minutes. Our revenue model. We have a base fee of $20 that increases by 90 cents per mile. We also have a sur surcharge of $25 if the object is over 75 pounds. We market through social medias such as Facebook and Instagram. We also go through the Santa Barbara uh, newspaper because we are a company based in Santa Barbara. Our summer projections. On average, we believe that we will be making $30 per trip and we would be doing 10 trips a day for a total of $300 a day. During the whole time of the, of the summer, a total of three months, we believe we'll be making a revenue of $27,000. Plus, the, subtract the cost of $2,500 for gas and wear and tear, we believe we'll be, be, we will be making a profit of $24,500. Our management team and advisors consist of myself, Coreyser, CEO, 
Zach Warner, CFO, and our trustee advisors, Jill Heckman and Jamie DeVries. The funds that we are asking for is $15,000, which would be used in developing our app. I would like to now open the floor for any questions or suggestions. Hi guys, that's a very interesting problem to solve. I had it actually yesterday. I bought um, a table that didn't fit in my car and I had to call a friend of mine that had a little truck. He came and helped me out. So it is a very needed um, little service. I think it's a really good idea. Um, just a little question for you. What, what are you planning for for scaling or is it just going to be a lifestyle business for you guys? Just a lifestyle business. If you're going to Costco and you just need that extra help, we will come to help you. Okay. Um, so my kind of question was, do you guys own the trucks and then you guys drive your own trucks out or is it more the app connects you to someone who has a truck in the area and you're essentially the middleman that takes a percentage? Uh, we are the, we both own trucks, large, large vehicles, and we are the two that would be going and getting the object for them and, or item and dri driving it to their house. Okay, got it. So that cost included in your insurance, because right now you're not insured to do this. Is it different than insurance for um, your commercial use at, at that point? Is that, was that built into the cost? Uh, yeah, I believe it was. Okay. <laughs> or not. <laughs> so, 15,000, how did you come up with that number for the app? Um, just, we, oh, you go ahead. Uh, just researching it online, it, I saw that like it's just like a base app that works pretty well, will cost around that much. Okay. Thank you very much. Next up, please welcome Walk Like a Local from San Marcos. My name is Melanie Rosales, and I am CEO and co-founder of Walk Like a Local Walking Tours, where you can experience Santa Barbara just like a local. We've noticed an opportunity rather than a problem here in Santa Barbara, California. 7.2 million tourists visit Santa Barbara every single year, and that's just an average. They bring a total revenue of about $2 billion, and that's a huge profit here in the tourism industry of Santa Barbara, and we're here to take part in that. Our company will plan, to focus, will plan on providing tours in the waterfront area of Santa Barbara. We focus on the harbor so that people arriving via cruise ship can easily access our tours. We focus on providing tours in Casa de Covarrubias, De la Guerra, El Presidio, as well as Paseo Nuevo, which are historical landmarks, as well as new, more modern places such as the Funk Zone. So people can visit wineries, they can dine, they can see the art that Santa Barbara has to offer. So our marketing customer analysis, we used a survey created by Destination Analyst Inc. here in Santa Barbara, and we noticed that 28 to 45 year olds is our target market. These people arrive via cruise ship or stay in a hotel locally, and so we will be um, providing tours for them. As well as the international traveler, we know that they speak multiple languages, therefore we will offer multilingual tours. We will be using TripAdvisor and a local website called SantaBarbaraCA.org in order to re um, have reviews that uh, our customers uh, leave on there as well. Also brochures at front desks so that people that are staying in hotels can go check in or check out and see our brochure. However, if you see all those brochures, that could potentially be our, co our competitors. And why would a customer say, I'm going to go to walk like a local rather than the Land Shark or SB Boogie or even the trolley tours? But something that distinguishes us, distinguishes us from them is that we physically take our customer into these landmarks rather than just driving by. We will charge $20 per adult and $10 per children. Three-year-olds and younger will be free. We have time slots at 10 a.m., 12 p.m., 2 p.m., and a sunset tour at 4 p.m. This will, we estimate that we will have eight to 10 people per group. That leaves us with 32 customers per day. If you times that by the 20 to $10 fee, that leaves us with $640 per day, $4,480 per week, and lastly, $20,000 per month. 
We do have three tour guides as of now, and we will continue to have three tour guides for the remainder of 2018. Each guide will bring in an average of about $20,000 a month. So our first year, we estimate to make an average of about $500,000. However, in 2019, we estimate to bring in three more guides as well as adding new routes rather than just the three routes that we originally had. And this will increase our earnings by $575,000, which will put us at $1.75 million by 2019. Our founders are myself, CEO and COO, Dominic Roderick, our CFO, and Dominic Pugliano, our CMO. Our advisors include Jillian Heckman and Jamie DeVries, the Kids Helping Kids and SMEA directors, as well as Jeffrey Smith, the Ambassador of Fluid Stance. Today we are asking for $5,000. This will allow us to help with our branding, marketing, and equipment needed to conduct our services. We need a square in order to complete credit and debit um, payments, as well as buying the brochures and creating our uniform, which will be t-shirts. Thank you very much. I will now open the floor for questions. I just got a quick question. So you got three tour guides. Right. Each tour guide is going to bring in 20K yeah. um, per month. How many tours does that tour guide need to give in order to reach that 20K? He needs to do the four, av or he or she will do the average of four tours from 10 a.m. all the way to 4 p.m. We didn't include days off, but that also will be um, including like going in, um, for example, if I have a day off, Dominic will go in. Or if Dominic wants a day off, then the other Dominic will go in, you know? Yeah, we have rod exactly. and hogs. That's how we differentiate them. <laughs> Absolutely. And then just for your resources, if your target market is the cruise ships coming in, I'd highly advise uh, working with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, they work a lot with the cruise ships that come in and out of Santa Barbara, just for your knowledge. So. Thank you so much. Of course. And have you done research of how many cruise ships actually come to Santa Barbara? We have. An average of five cruise ships came in the spring 2018 season, and we estimate that two to three more cruise ships come in over the summer, so that leaves us at eight to ten. And each cruise ship has 3,000 passengers, so that leaves us with like 30,000 um, customers just in cruise ships. And that doesn't even count or include the hotels or just a simple one-day trip uh, for tourists. Have you spoken to the, the cruise ships themselves? We haven't. We're in the process of emailing uh, Princess Cruise Ship Lines. <laughs> Good for you. Thank you. So what kind of licenses do you need to be able to run this type of business? We need a business license in order to have our booth set up by the harbor, as well as operator's insurance, which is a tour operator's uh, liability license. In case something happens to our customer during the trip or during the tour, we don't want to be held responsible. So, is, But the 5000 is for marketing. is. Is part of the it's a the equipment cost? is part of the business licenses in order to conduct business here. And the salaries, where are they? Uh, we weren't planning on paying ourselves, but we will be doing thirty dollars per or fifteen dollars per hour. Sorry. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you so well, much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Please welcome to the stage, Jim Search. Hi, I'm Chris Medina, and I am CEO and founder of Gem Search. I want to begin with how beautiful our city is, uh, Santa Barbara. Like, how many places can you think of going on an epic hiking trip um, up in the mountains and then w go to the beach within 10 minutes of each other? So many locals here in Santa Barbara have grown up here countless years and know many of these epic um, hidden gems all over town, some which include Seven, uh, or Lacumbe Peak, Seven Falls, um, Nats Castle, and Mar Mesa. These are some of the hidden gems all over town. And um, locals and people who are just moving to the city miss out on what Santa Barbara has to offer. We here as Gem Search aim to change that and bring adventure to you. Our, uh, Gem Search, we are creating Gem Search because people are bored at home and don't know what to do and they lack the knowledge of places to go and spend the best of their time. And there are some uh, apps like Yelp and TripAdvisor, which will uh, help. That are, <laughs> wait. 
TripAdvisor and Yelp are mainstream, but they kind of pay or they have businesses that pay off um, them and can list them on top, and they may not be the best. So our solution to this is a free app that we will have on the iTunes Store for free. Um, it will it will show you hidden gems near. It'll show you hidden gems near you based on your location, and it'll have um, directions of how to get to those hidden gems, photos that area, peer sharing, and review-based system, which will give a customer a better understanding of the different locations, and premium services. As for our revenue streams, we'll be running off our freemium business model. Uh, as our app develops, we'll have ad space available, which business will be able to um, buy to increase our revenue stream. And then we'll have a premium service called the VIP package, uh, it will run at a $2.99 monthly rate. And this will remove ads and also uh, give more capabilities to the user, some of which include best times of day to go. So say if you're like a photographer, you want to go take a picture at a sunrise or sunset. And also when it, the location is most busy. And also we'll give a free trial the first month for users. As for our competitors, we have three main competitors, Yelp, TripAdvisor, and AllTrails. Our direct competitor is All Trails. We have very similar market as them and also some similar features. However, we have an advantage because uh, we, our team, our locals, we understand the value of hidden gems to us. And compared to these big corporations, they don't really focus on the best locations. They just really focus on these businesses which will spon be sponsored to be listed on top. For our market, we, follow, we, follow, we fall under the travel app industry which it has a value of 7 million users, and we just want to penetrate 5% of that, which c comes to a value of 350,000 customers. And these customers are college students, people who have just moved into a, a new town, who would love to adventure, explore, and be outdoors. As for our sales and marketing, we want to begin in Santa Barbara and integrate the word of mouth and free trial campaign, which uh, we'll have people test our, we will have people use our free trial experience what our, how much value our app has to offer, and then we'll have them tell their friends and family so they can also experience that as well. Apart from that, we'll buy ads on other apps and social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and buy ads based on magazines and newspapers. As for our financial projections, uh, if, when we follow our marketing strategy, we project that by the year 2021, we will reach our market goal of 350,000 customers. Also, we, we also will have a, we also forecast that every year we'll have a 50% increase in revenue. And as for expenses, that will consist of hiring app, app developers, uh, renting out servers, and maintenance throughout. With just $60,000, we can build our base version of our app. Uh, we would, through crowdfunding, we'll be able to reach this goal. And with our base version of app, we'll be able to share this with local venture capitalists and through that partnership, we'll be well on our way to for a multi-million dollar company. And this is our team. Uh, I'm CEO and founder of GemSearch. Uh, some things I may not know about me is I'm a digital media expert, uh, photographer, I play volleyball, I love going outdoors and I love food. And then my uh, co-founder and CEO, Soren Walker, he has great customer service background, plays volleyball, has computer programming experience, public speaker, and a sales expert. And our advisor, uh, Jillian Heckman, is a teacher and director of the Entrepreneurship Academy at San Marcos High School. We are Gem Search. Thank you. Um, so it's a free app you can download? Yeah, and then uh, you can upgrade. OK, so the upgrade is how you make uh, yeah. the revenue. OK, yeah. I was, my question was, how do you generate income? Yeah, sorry, I didn't clarify that. No, no worries. No worries. Um, and then also, it's funny that this is coming up because one of my friends uh, visited town and she literally, like a month ago, was like, it'd be cool if there was an app that could just show me all the cool hidden spots in Santa Barbara. So. <laughs> yeah. How many hidden gems have you found in Santa Barbara to add to your app? Mm, from, what, from my knowledge, just in Santa Barbara, Probably, let's see, I want to say 11 or 10 or 11 or so, just in Santa Barbara, but there's probably more that we can find. 
And this guy's like a huge photographer, man. All those pictures that you saw in the slideshow, those are all pictures that he took of those hidden gems in the Santa Barbara. They're beautiful photos. Do you know from uh, in All Trails, your, your competitor, um, how many of those are in their app, for example? Um, probably maybe five of those, like half the amount. I still have to go through all of them, but most, like probably half the amount of the time. And then you say you'd like to scale going forward. Mm -hmm. So would you be going to every city to find every gem personally, um, or how how do you plan to do that? So through our, so our social media campaigns, or not social, just our marketing campaigns, we plan the for the app to self grow. So as we have people tell other people, we'll also have let customers kind of like submit their own locations, and we'll have a. What was it called? Sorry, again. The Eventually, we want to be like completely user based, where they can submit their own thing, and we're self sustaining. So they can submit it. We'll have a moderating team in the that'll review it, review process, and then it'll upload themselves. Thank you. The revenue model still bothers me a little Oops. bit and stuff. That um, was time. <laughs> also, sorry. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. All right, next up to the stage is Hinterland from San Marcos. All right, before we start, I want everyone to picture this. You've just spent the last day hiking through the Sierra Nevada wilderness. Oh, after 10 miles, your feet hurt, your legs are sore, and all you want to do is just get some rest so that you can do it all the next morning. Now, the thing is, as soon as you get to your camp, you unpack and you realize that all you've got to sleep on is just this little foam pad about half an inch thick. Doesn't sound too comfortable, does it? My name is Trevor Eubank. No. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> My name is Trevor Eubank and I am the CEO and founder of Hinterland, an outdoor gear company founded by two Santa Barbarians in, with a passion for the outdoors. Now, as you can, as you have probably picked up, our problem that we're trying to identify is that most backpackers can all agree that sleeping mats and sleeping bags take up a lot of space in their limited storage capacity. Two, is that they provide minimal comfort for how much space they take up. Three, is that hammocks just aren't warm enough to use on their own. Now at this point you're probably thinking, why can't you just put a sleeping bag in a hammock? That would solve the situation, right? Well, the thing is, I can tell you from experience that it really doesn't work. There's a few key elements that just need to be solved before that's possible and comfortable. Now, those situations um, are just because the hammock itself is fine, but the sleeping bag moves around, it gets all tangled up in itself. I've even fallen out of it a few times. It's just not a fun deal. So this is how we plan to solve it. Our solution is a hammock sleeping bag hybrid which will be designed to be one piece, so that's more secure and will save space. Oh, sorry. Um, it will be fully enclosed and insulated to keep you warm even during the coldest nights, and it will function as a normal sleep bag if not hung up in the trees, if needed. These, um, this is the main design that we're working on right now, it has some of the key features. Um, these features include the easy setup, it will be insulated, compact, lightweight, and all one piece to provide the best user experience. Our business model is we will have online direct-to-customer sales, as well as sales through outdoor retailers like REI, Backcountry, and Moose Jaw. Additionally, we plan on working with outdoors in interested social media influencers like Nicholas Simons, Holly Johnson, and Joe Robinette. These people we are working, we are hoping to work with um, by contacting them and um, having them test out the product, so they can get back to us and um, allow us to improve it to their, so that they can have a good experience with it, as well as using their social influence to increase brand awareness and find potential customers. Additionally, our market opportunity is approximately 120 billion for the outdoor um, products industry. But let's be real, we're not going for that big of a figure yet. So this is for the hammock industry alone, almost 300 million. If we were to capture 1% of that market, we could be valued at almost $3 million. 
And not only that, but it's predicted to grow 17% by 2021. So we are, will be in a, in a growing marketplace where we hope that innovations like our product will continue to spur it on. Now, to find out whether people would be interested in this, we asked 50 outdoor interested um, individuals about this product. Most of them were interested in the comfort aspect of it. Also, they identified that they would like to sleep in a hammock over a sleeping pad. And the most key figure is that when asked if they were interested in this specific idea, 90% of them said, almost 90% of them said yes. Now, the thing is, we're not alone in this um, marketplace, but the thing is, there's nothing exactly like it either. The closest thing is what you call a hammock um, underquilt. It's what this is. It's basically a down jacket for a hammock. So there's some really key things that we love about this product. For instance, it retains some of the heat coming through the bottom. Um, it's comfortable design and very portable, but there's also some things we think we can improve about it. Those things include it, that a sleeping bag is needed, which is one thing we're trying to eliminate. Also, it, the open exposed top allows the person to be exposed to all of the elements which is something that we hope to solve by putting the insulation over the top of them as well. And it's separate from the hammock. So not only do you have to purchase a sleeping bag, you have to purchase a hammock, set that all up, but then you have to purchase this thing and put it underneath. So we all hope to solve that by making it all one piece, which will make it much more simple and direct use for the consumer. Our financial projections, we estimate the cost of goods sold to be $150. And our wholesale price will be $250 per unit, meaning we have a $100 profit based off our wholesale price. Now, we plan on actually retailing the product at $375 a unit. That means we can have a $225 profit margin um, just at our retail product or retail price. And if we were to sell 1,500 products over one year at wholesale price, we are looking at almost, or no, at $360,000 in revenue just over one year. These graphs show the estimated projections for year just based off of our revenue like that. If we were to sell at the 1,500 um, products range for the upcoming years, plus a little bit more, we're gonna be approaching $100,000 in rep, or sorry, $400,000 in revenue as well as the revenue per month. We um, also understand how over the different months, people are gonna be more interested in purchasing this product um, over the months, of, the months in summer and fall versus in winter and spring because it's just that the warmer climate is a better season to go. This is our advisory board. We have Jill, De, uh, Jill Heckman, Jamie DeVries, and Jeffrey Smith three established entrepreneurs who are willing to work with us and help, help us along achieving our goals. We are asking for $40,000 for 20% of the company. This price, or sorry, these funds will be used to create a final design and prototype for a product, as well as preparing for the launch through the pat starting the patent process, further online development, and starting co-op partnerships with the retailers. My name is Trevor Eubank, I'm the CEO, and we also have Alan Romero, our amazing COO, to help us uh, organize the company and achieve our goals. We are Hinterland, and we thank you. Any questions? I guess the first question I think you answered, which is you're gonna go after a patent on this, because I don't see any, but what are you gonna patent? I mean, you know, what's unique about this thing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're thinking a design patent for one of the things, so just the way that it looks with the whole, like, basically the like sleeping bag with hammock straps on the side, but also the utility patent behind it, so that's the actual design and function of a sleeping bag um, hammock hybrid, so the insulation maybe. Um, basically, an insulated hammock is what we would be panting towards for the utility band. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most crucial things when you're hiking, as you know, is the weight on totally. your back. Mm -hmm. um, so how heavy is this? So we are estimating the weight to be less than a, um, 
like a traditional, or sorry, a little bit more than a traditional sleeping bag, which if it's a nice lightweight uh, fiber, which we estimate like down or the synthetic fibers, we can make it very light so that rather than have to having to carry a sleeping bag and a sleeping pad, which would be much heavier um, than if we were to just carry this one product. Um, so I've definitely um, slept in a hammock before, mm -hmm. and so I, I, I totally understand this. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm thinking of using your product, and I'm zipped up. Mm -hmm. How am I going to get out? Like I'm, I'm zipped up. Like my my arms are yeah. in there. So like, is there like an inside zipper or like? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, totally. So we've uh, given some thought about that because, like you, I've been in that situation where my arms are inside the sleeping bag. So, but the zipper's on the outside. So we're thinking um, of putting the zipper. It's a double side zipper. So they yeah. have. They have the zippers that have the inside, um, like, I don't even know what it's called, but just a pull, yeah, pull tab. Yeah, it's a double-sided zipper. Yeah, yeah. so something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, all right, thank, thank you. you guys very much. Thank you. That's good. Good. Thank you. We are looking for a shot doctor from Cabrillo High School. Altered basketball sleeve. It's more than just the muscle compression. So what it does is it records your shots attempted and your shots made through a sensor that you add onto the back of a basketball rim. And it is wirelessly connected to the basketball sleeve itself. And then the sensor is Bluetooth that you add and hook up to your cell phone. So what you would do is you would shoot your normal jump shot in either range of a mid-range, a three-point uh, WNBA college, high school, or NBA range. And when you start to miss, it'll add on, like it'll catch on to what you're doing and it'll let you know. And it's because if you don't have like a other person there to tell you what you're doing wrong or a basketball trainer itself. Our main focus is to get as many kids to the, to the NBA or WNBA as possible, a professional level or college level, because they may not have the grades to get to that. But a lot of kids themselves, they, they go out and they work every day to try and make, to make their dream come true as a basketball athlete but they don't necessarily have the training or any of that there for them. So what it does is the sleeve can give them that uh, professional help without necessarily having a trainer there at all times or be able to afford it. We are targeting kids that are in middle school, like 12 to 14 age, years age. And uh, although like the product, sorry about that. Uh, our sizes are gonna vary from like little toddler ages, because there are a lot of kids, like for example, at our school, I have a kid on our team currently who's been playing since he was like four or five years old and he didn't have necessarily a product like this itself. So there'll be go from sizes from small all the way up to people that are born like seven feet tall, like so extra, extra large, like longer arms than an average person. And currently there's no other like brand that is making a shooting sleeve like, like this right now. So it would just be, it would only be us ourselves me and my partner, and since there would be no one else to have it, we'd have our own patent on it, so we'd be the only one of the people who like to actually make the sleeve itself. For pricing, a normal average sleeve would cost about 20 bucks, and our product will cost $50 because it will come for the, it's a high-tech shooting sleeve, it comes with a sensor, and then the app itself is free, but it will come with the charger because you're still going to have, since it's Bluetooth and wireless, you have to connect it into a wall to charge for a certain amount of hours to get the, uh, to work out in for yourself. Our main goal is obviously to get as many kids to that college level, but for the company, we would want to go worldwide. Like we would start out smaller, like obviously in this little city with smaller brands and selling it in smaller stores, but we eventually want to go worldwide and sell into bigger stores like Walmart, Dick's Sporting Goods, team up with brands like Nike, Adidas, and major brands, and distributors like UPS and FedEx to sell our stuff and get advertisements like on TV or on billboards or online. For our first year in sales, we would want to get up to 10, 000, at least 10000 because if we sell them at 50 bucks, we'd be able to make a profit of $500,000, which most of it is going to be going towards after we pay our employees and ourselves, and we would be taking our own pay cut so we can put as much as we can into the business itself to try and expand as fast as possible and improve our product the best we can. So, And every single year, we want to double our profit, so the next year, we want to sell 20,000 because the first year is 10 and then make a million dollar profit and just keep expanding and trying to move on globally. Uh, for team management, it'd be me, 
and my partner, Isaiah Cisneros, at the very head of the brand, and we'd make all the final decisions. And we'd have other people working in the companies and take uh, advice from people that have given reviews on our products. And every decision that we make uh, will always be, be agreed on for the both of us. And we'd be taking information heard from our other employees, like if they have like an own idea they want to think that we should listen to, we'd obviously give them a give them a chance to express themselves and take it into consideration before we make our next decision or if we add on to the business. For advertisement and distri distribution, at first since it would be, uh, we'd be brand new on like the scene. We would do a lot of, we'd try and put our own money into doing a newspaper ad or through word of mouth or trying to get people to pass it on, but we would eventually want to reach being able to be on TV, billboards, and have commercials and have hopefully like bigger name people be able to represent our brands and in um, for commercials, like example, like Stephen Curry or Diana uh, Taurasi, who's in the WNBA, for we can do boys and girls, so it's not just a boys sport. And we want to distribute our product so we can plan, so we can work up with uh, UPS and FedEx, but at first it would be through like smaller little um, stores we have to sell it through, like not the major brands, because we wouldn't have our name out yet. And then that would be what the average shooting sleeve would look like. And then it would just have like a Bluetooth button on it. So it would go to the sensor. And then the app, you have to download it. And that is connected to the, the sensor itself. And that was our presentation. So any questions? Thank you. I don't know. We do not currently have a prototype. Yeah, that was, so it would catch on to your misses, and then when you start missing repetitively, because the sensor's connected to the rim and the net, it would catch on to when you're not making it, because when, usually when you make a shot, the net moves itself, and so does the rim, and it has to match that, that uh, movement. And we have to input data into the sleeve itself from uh, like personal shooters, because we play, you know, we both play varsity basketball. We watch videos on other athletes who give uh, advice on how to properly shoot. So when you, it would have the inputted data on how to properly shoot it, and it would give you that movement of you know elbow in, flick of the wrist, like basic basketball jump shot form. Got it. Got it. I'm not sure where to start with this question. So, is there anything like this, and any other where it captures this kind of movement, and then it gives you feedback? No, they, the closest thing they have right now is a handle fitness machine. It'd be similar to that, but it's, that's for dribbling, and this is shooting. So the handle fitness is kind of like Guitar Hero, you know, the video game. This, the handle fitness machine is like, uh, it's a dribble machine. So it tells you when to dribble and how to dribble, and you have to be in that sensor motion, and then ours would be the same thing for the jump shot. <coughs> so is this but similar to uh, like a, uh, the golf? Kind of like a Wii Sports. Yeah. Kinda, it's kind of like that, but instead of holding like a, a handle, it'd be like a sleeve, so you wouldn't have to hold it, and you can actually get your, your basketball workout in. So a standard sleeve runs 25 to $30. Uh, I looked that up today and everything. Correct. So you think that you could, just for another $20, you can build, why would you sell it for $50 versus twice that? Because if you look at... Um, the pricing for like a PS4 controller or like that, that's how it's connected uh, wirelessly to the Bluetooth on the sensor. Those, the controllers itself go for 50, but the, like, they, that's just because the material and everything it's made out of, it's just little wires and everything, like sensors, like smaller stuff that aren't as expensive to actually make. So I'm, like, I was doing a little bit of the stuff to actually like research on how to make it, and it would roughly come out to around $27, $28 total. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we are welcoming Game Changer to the stage from San Marcos. Hello, I'm Ryan Godges, and I'm the co-founder of Game Changer along with Jackson Stormo. Together, we are breaking the mold of traditional basketball training in Santa Barbara. Growing up here, we both experienced the struggle firsthand of trying to develop our skills and get feedback what we need to do to improve. Luckily, we were both able to play in competitive club teams and travel all over the West Coast and play. However, it doesn't matter how good your team is or how good the teams you're playing against are, because your development as a player will be limited if all the training you do happens in a team setting. The habits you develop in your youth continue to linger around through adulthood. Basketball is no different. So when players develop poor fundamentals at a young age, 
these same habits continue to linger around throughout their entire careers. And since these bad habits don't get addressed, they continue to linger around. And since these bad habits aren't, since these bad habits don't get addressed, players don't know what they need to do to improve and continue to waste practice time honing in the wrong skills and working on the wrong things. And as a result, pretty much after every workout, they're just digging themselves a deeper hole working on the wrong habits. The solution is to offer progressive base skill instruction to allow players to feel comfortable working on what they need to do to improve and take their game to the next level. Over 1,100 kids play recreational basketball in Santa Barbara, and over 200 kids play club. On top of that, the majority of these kids come from middle and upper class families that have parents that are willing to invest in them, creating a great market opportunity. We rely primarily on texting, word of mouth, and Instagram, but above all that, we both rely on being respected in the basketball community in Santa Barbara and being recognizable names, recognizable names for people to train with and to talk to. And there is no direct competition for us, and indirect competition includes club teams and camps, but no matter how many camps are scheduled or how, or how many club teams are created, it will not affect the amount of revenue we generate. We, we charge $25 per private session, $20 per group session, and each group session usually is around two to four kids and lasts around an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. And we've currently generated over $1,000 in revenue, and all the revenue we make is direct net profit because we have zero expenses. And th this is the team, me and Jackson. And Jackson has had an impressive basketball career so far. He was a four-year basketball, he was a four-year player, four-year varsity player at San Marcos, two-year starter, named first team Channel League, both junior and senior year, named Channel League MVP this year after leading us to an 8-0 and season, named CIF Player of the Year after leading, at, leading our school to his first ever CIF title, and was named Southern California Boys Basketball Player of the Week earlier this year, and named Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara County Athlete of the Week, and was named Santa Barbara County Basketball Player of the Year. After, and he will be continuing his basketball career at Pepperdine. As for myself, I was named first team Channel League both junior and senior year, and our first team CIF honors this year. I will be continuing my career at Hawaii Pacific next year. And our advisors, Jill Heckman, none of it would be possible without you. And um, <laughs> um, our other advisor, Andre Murray, is the director of AM Sports Academy, which is a successful basketball training academy in New York City. And I've been working with him since like fifth grade, and Storm and I often consult with him on planning workouts, talking to clients, and just running a better overall business. No cost. I mean, you got equipment. You get, they're just going to give you free gym to use. I mean, we do all of our training outside, and since the weather's perfect in Santa Barbara, it's never an issue. <laughs> Can't argue that one. So this is, business is basically centered around you two. Yeah, it's all us. We do everything until you separate because you're both going to do. Until we separate, because we both go to college. We didn't want to start a business that was going to rely on having to grow over years and years because we're both going to be super busy next year playing, going to school. So we just want to do something. Like our goal was to make around two, three K before we go to college, just in pocket money. So we decided to just start this business. <laughs> we're not pocket money. You know, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna to invest it wisely in our 401k, like the reset. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so question. So, for target market, are you going yeah, after for like? Our, sorry, what did you say? Oh no. So, so trying to better understand your target market. So you're going people who are in like basketball teams, and then like working with uh, like select people in the team that like need that one-on-one -on -one training. Um, our target market is anyone who's willing to pay and wants to train with us. <laughs> so we are, like, like I said, there's 1,100 kids that play recreational basketball and 200 that play club. So we're, we're targeting 
kids basically six through 14 in Santa Barbara that are wanting to get better yeah. and are determined. And although it's called Game Changer and it's not like just a basketball thing, we're trying to teach life skills and it's kind of a life changing thing. Well, yeah. we're trying to you know, teach like, de like determination, co co consistency, and just developing better life habits at, like in general and especially for younger kids like six, seven, eight, this is like a big impact on their life. Well, I definitely yeah. believe you guys are excellent basketball players <laughs> just based off, <laughs> yeah. <Thank you. laughs> We are welcoming now Blendbot to the stage. Please give him a hand. Hi guys, my name is Chloe Ritchie and I'm the founder and CEO of Blendbot. So as I was growing up, ever since I have been 16 months old, I have been diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. This is a disease where it causes extreme joint pain, swelling, and overall morning stiffness. As a child, of course, I wanted to go outside and play with my friends or be involved in sports, such as soccer, water polo, which I have played. Although, which has made this possible for me, is the help of protein and supplements that have helped me got through my arthritis. Although, there has never been a specific customized powder for me. We are a protein company with a twist that makes your goals a reality. We help you to fully customize your supplement powder tailored to you. We are Blendbot, the power in powder. So what is the problem here? The problem here is that people are overspending their money each and every day on supplement powders that may not even apply to them or help them in the long run. When you go to these stores, products can range from $50 to $100 for a tub and that is a lot of money for a package that you don't know that the ingredients are even, which ingredients are even in each product. Also, people are uneducated on which products to buy. There are a wide selection, but you don't know which is best suits you. Also, it is very inconvenient to have to go to the store and be overwhelmed by all these products and bombarded by a salesman trying to make his monthly goal. So what is the solution here? This is where Blendbot comes in. We are an online customizable website where you can tailor to any powder variation of variety, uh, sorry, flavor, supplement, or powder. We also have the health of experts on the online website. So you can have a live chat with the health experts to help you fit your needs. So let's say Sally here wants to go on the online website. So we go into the Blendbot online website browser and she picks with the help of an elf health expert on a live chat, her customized supplement powder. Then when she makes her purchase, Blendbot Manufacturing Company goes and configures and customizes their own product for you. Then you can pick to ship at any location of your choice. From there, we want to obviously see how the consumer is enjoying and using our product. So we also created a feature on our online website where you can see and track how well you're doing over time. So let's say Sally put on some weight lately and she wants to lose a few pounds. So she gets our trim and fit powder and she puts in her inputs her powder that she's using each and every day and also how much weight she's losing each and every day. And this will help her see real results and this will also help the company see how the product is affecting people's lives. So this is a website preview of what it's going to look like. So we are also targeting bodybuilders because that is a very in new thing in our society. And so we also have stuff for bulking up. And of course, Blendbot's main differentiating point than other protein powder brands is build your own customizable powder. We also have speak with the nutritionist, what we most recommend because we are paying health experts to be on our website to have live chats, real conversations with other people. And we'll also have pre-made packages, which you can have for trim and fit, or let's say bulking up. So our market analysis. Our market analysis is a glo global protein supplements market at $12.4 billion in 2016. And it is expected to reach $21.5 billion by 2025, growing at an annual compa compound rate of 6.3%. And protein powder was a prominent product segment in 2016 our business model. So we will also have subscriptions. First, we will have one-time use so you can try out the product, and we will also have monthly subscriptions where you could reoccur using your protein or supplement product every single day. So the, we'll have referral programs for returning customers, such as a rewards program. So the more you use our product, the more discounts and more you get. So our supplement container, of course, we have Blendbot's customized powder. 
In our add-ons, we will have shaker cups that help use shake the protein powders, and we'll have t-shirts as well. And as I've said before, our data health tracker that will help the consumer and help the company. Our marketing and distribution. So we want to first go local because we live here in San, Santa Barbara and we are high school students. And so we will go in gyms, chiropractor care, and physical therapist sites. We will help them use sponsor our product and hopefully they will like it and promote it to other people. We will also have social influencers for so sponsorships to help promote our product and they will get a percentage of what we are making. The distribution is online re retail direct to consumer, so no brick and mortar stores. It is directly from the online website to the consumer. So we wanted to go local first of all. So Eric Kaufman, Kaufman is actually a PE teacher at Lacalina High School, and he is a bodybuilder at Gold's Gym. So we want to promote it locally through Santa Barbara. Jason Poston is a big social influencer for bodybuilding, and he has 774,000 Instagram followers. Miles Jones is a lacrosse athlete and he plays professional for Maryland and he has 77,000 followers and that is a more easier market target market for us because we are still starting up our company. So our competitors are True Nutrition. They sell protein and supplements. The proteins average from $12.99 per pound and the supplements range from $14.99 per package. They have a variety of flavors but they only offer customization for protein powder and oatmeal. BSN is another protein company, and they're around $8.99 per pound. They're very popular, very healthy, but they only offer protein. So the cost of products in the production. What we're going to do is a range from around $12.99 per pound of protein, and for supplements, about $10.99 for packaging, for packages. And depending on the specific product, the prices will vary a little bit. We are already in contact with a manufacturer, which is NutriScience. They're a licensed manufacturing company that is helping us determine all the prices and supplements and powders that we want for our business. And the packaging will look like this. So the protein or the supplements will go in the specific bags and will go into the container and people could decide whether they want them separately or combined together for their own customizable powder. So our financial projections. For the estimates of the cost of goods sold, it's going to be around $13 per unit, which includes packaging, delivery, powder, and shipping as well as the retail price is going to be around $22.99 with one supplement and one pound of powder. Of course, if you want more, the prices will increase or decrease. And if we get 100 subscribers for 12 months, for one year, we are expected to get a revenue of $27,588. Our funds needed in the use of funds. So we have the web development, which is creating a having a professional web developer help us create our site to make it easily accessible, especially for the older people because we want it to be very easy to use. Marketing, it will be $3,000 for helping, giving a profit to the social influencers that are helping us as well as advertisements on YouTube or in our local stores. The health experts will be about $4,000 for a foot in the door, costing $20, chart, giving them $20 per hour plus commission. And our packaging and production will be about $10,000, including all the containers, all the powders, and all the supplements. So we're asking for $22,000 for a 50% equity stake. My advisors are Jillian Heckman and Jamie DeRees. They're the SMEA directors, and Sergio Villa, a local financial planner. Our, yeah, this is our team. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got a very nice presentation, so Thank congratulations you. on that. It. Um, you say your powder um, is, is different than others. In other words, when you go to a normal store, you're not sure what's in the powder. So how are you making your powder different? So we are making our powder different uh, by giving a customizable, and we're going to add more variety because there are, of course, so many different powders and supplements out there. But we are trying to make ours different by making it less expensive to have a lot more combined powders than having to buy them separately and having more variety of powders, supplements, and flavors in one specific location. Uh, my question is more based on your pricing. So you've got the subscription based model going, and so if you're doing custom blends for people and you're starting to subscribe it and like the customer decides to cancel their subscription after two months, mm -hmm. I, I can imagine that could be very costly. Um, 
you know, creating a custom blend for someone. So is there certain minimum orders? Yeah, so what we were planning to do was have the subscriptions, but you can cancel with a, like probably a small fee that has not been completely um, decided on what the fee is yet, but we would make it based on month to month. So we wouldn't have the extra eight months of powder, like what are we going to do with this extra? Yeah. So when you show the packaging, mm -hmm. it looked like you had separate pieces that fit into the yes. container. So that's not a blend, that's just separate. You, you're not really blending it, you're just saying, okay, I'm gonna give you four, and you blend it yourself? Yeah, so what we were trying to do was offer the customization to make your own powder. Okay. So we are giving all the products and you could, we were gonna blend it together, but we weren't sure if people wanted to have it all together or separately, so we offered both, essentially. So how many, for $10,000, how many different product? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank good, thank you. <laughs> okay, we are looking forward to having two bud on the stage. Hi, my name is Grace Gal. This is Daria Peruse and Sasha Green, and our company is Two Bud. Now, before we begin with our pitch, we want to do, we have a little challenge for you judges. This morning we threw three pairs of earbuds into our backpacks, and now we want to see how long it takes you to untangle them. Okay? Ready? Set, go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, stop. <laughs> You've already spent 25 seconds untangling those earbuds and you're not even done yet. And those 25 seconds add up. In the average person's lifespan, they spend 3.5 days untangling their earbuds. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's 3.5 days that could be spent doing something so much more productive. So our team decided that there needs to be a solution. And the solution is TubeBud. Pull your earbuds out of your backpack with confidence that they'll come out untangled. <laughs> so this is a side view of TubeBud, and essentially what it is, is a sleeve that goes over your earbuds featuring a wire that runs down one side, allowing your earbuds to hold whatever shape you decide to put them in. This is what TubeBud looks like on your earbuds, and as you can see, it features a slit going down one side, which allows users to easily put it on their earbuds and take it off. Also, the wire adds protections to your cords, preventing excessive bending, which results in breakage. The lightweight design makes, and sleek design makes our product something that consumers want. Within Santa Barbara, we already have 16,500 potential users. And when we sent out a survey to around 100 people, 86.6% of people said that they struggled with this problem. And when we asked if they would buy this product, 45.1% of people said yes, they would, depending on price, and 41.5% of people said they would, regardless of price. That's everyone who said that they struggled with the, pro with the problem willing to buy our product. TubeBud follows a business-to-consumer model. We manufacture the product, and we sell it directly to consumers on our website, tubeBud.org, which we do own the domain for, as well as Amazon. Now, in order to reach our target market of 14 to 18 year olds, we're going to sponsor social media influencers. When customers visit our website, they will see a variety of color options, but when we partner with a social media influencer, the influencer will be able to pick a pattern and color and design their own TubeBud for their followers to buy. So, you might be thinking, what about wireless AirPods, wi wireless headphones and earbuds? Well, our target market of 14 to 18 year olds doesn't have 200 to $300 to be spending on these um, devices which are easy to lose and um, quite expensive. So based on that survey that we sent out, we have determined that we should price our product at $8.99. Based on our fact, so we do have, um, we are in contact with a fact, 
factory that could manufacture our product, and they gave us the estimate that it'll cost 87 cents to produce, leaving us with an $8.12 profit margin. Now, as I mentioned before, just in Santa Barbara, we have a 16,500 um, people that we can tap into, and in year one, we predict that we will tap into 15% of that market, leaving us with $20,100. In year two, we expect to tap into 75% of that market, giving us a profit of $100,485. And in year three, we will have grown enough to sponsor big social media influencers. And so with the market in Santa Barbara, as well as the market, as well as the consumers that our influencers bring in, we will make $120,000. So in order to create our product, we need $12,000. $1,900 will go to creating the mold that will mass produce TubeBud, and the rest will go to brand development through, cre through our creating our website and sponsoring influencers. The team consists of me, the CEO and founder of TubeBud, my COO, Dara Peruse, and my CMO, Sasha Green. Our advisors are Jillian Heckman, the director of the San Marcos Entrepreneurship Academy, Mike Pugh, who's a startup and marketing expert, and John Stump, who's a prototyping expert who's helping us create our prototype. Thank you. Any questions? Um, so with your cost, it was the 87 cents. Did that, does that cost also include shipping and fulfillment? Or is that just what the manufacturer is charging you? That's what the manufacturer is charging us as well as cost of labor. Because with the um, mold, it'll only take two minutes to produce. And that's, and if we're paying our, sorry, if we're paying $15 an hour, then it'll only cost 30 cents in labor per two bed. So yeah. What's your product actually made of? Um, so that product, we took our earbuds <laughs> and the wire and we just taped around it. Um, in the future, of course, we're gonna use either silicone or rubber. We haven't quite decided which is the most cost efficient and um, most effective yet, so yeah. I like the idea. Um, is it something, is, have you looked into, can you patent something like that? Because again, when, once you make the mold, mm -hmm. you know, you can knock those things out pretty yeah. um, easily. We haven't looked into that too much, but we do want to get a patent on our design. Okay. Yeah. I would definitely advise you to do that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, we have Flora coming up. Please welcome Flora. Hello, my name is Amanda Morris, and Flora is my business. We're a wellness technology company. Every day, people have stressful lives, whether if they're rushing to get to work on time or if they're simply trying to find balance. Flora is an application that aids in helping the user reduce their stress levels and find mindfulness by practicing proper breathing techniques. Did you know that 73% of people experience chronic stress? And an average of 1 million people each day skip work due to the symptoms of stress. So when we feel stress, our body goes into a fight, flight, or freeze mode. This causes the muscles to tension and for our nervous system to be, to be alerted that there is a threat. As a result, we start to feel discombobulated. Now, Flora's goal is for the users to be able to build stress resistance and to become calm in those situations which we would react. So you might be asking, how are we going to do this? We're going to be creating a wellness tool which has the ability to determine your stress level. Simply, you use your phone and you go on the app. On the app, you're able to place your, fit your index finger on the camera. For 90 seconds, it will read your stress index level based on heart rate uh, variability. And if your stress index was high, the app will then recommend you to go take the breathing pacer. The breathing pacer is a guided exercise which guides you on how to properly breathe. 60-40, more out breath than in breath. Now, this is a solution for both therapists, which are one of our targeted customers, and for the users itself. So it's a helpful tool for therapists because they're able to help their patients in between therapy sessions. They also have the ability to track their patient to see how well they are doing between sessions and to notice trends. For example, if one of the therapists knows that their patient isn't doing too well on Wednesdays, then that's something they can bring up on the next conversation that they have. Also, for the user end, it helps the user change their habits, reverse the way their natural stress response is. And they can also grow more awareness on how their thinking impacts their daily lives. 
Also, they can monitor their progress and see how they're improving on a weekly and monthly basis. So here's what the prototype looks like. So on the left is the user's end, so what the user would see. So this is the app with the heart rate uh, variability and also the breathing pacer on the bottom. Now what you see on the right is what the therapist would see. This is the profiles of all the patients that the therapist has. In this case, the therapist, her name is Anna Gray, and she's looking at Andy Johnson's profile. Every time Andy Johnson takes his stress index level, it gets sent directly to Anna Gray's computer so she can record his results and understand how his week is going and what they can further discuss at the next, next therapy uh, meeting. Now the market size. So the mobile health industry is worth 33.49 billion US dollars. And within that is the remote patient monitoring industry. That's worth 111.9 million dollars. Now the local market, there's 100 therapists in Santa Barbara that, uh, that specialize in helping people who are stressed. Now Flora's opportunity is to tap into 30, about 30% of that market. So here's some market validation facts. 70% of physicians are already using apps as part of their practice. And secondly, remote monitoring usage is growing at a compounded rate of 47.9%. So more people are adapting to this technology of checking in on their health by using remote monitoring. In 2018, it's projected to be 7.1 million, and by 2021, 50.2 million. So these are our five marketing approaches. First of all, we really want to be able to reach out to the community and explain to the community what our goals are and how we want to help people. Second of all, it's networking. Third of all, we want to create a really well-informed app example video so that people who are therapists who are planning to purchase this subscription model can get a full understanding of the offers of the, of the company's features and benefits. Also, we're going to have a very user-friendly website that's very informative. And lastly, email marketing. Now, here are our top seven competitors. Now, Flora differentiates from these because, first of all, you're able to actually figure out what your stress index is. Our other competitors instead ask you a survey like, how are you feeling today on a scale from 1 to 10? That's not as accurate as your body's actual um, stress index response. Second of all, other apps exist on there where you can just read to find out what your stress index is, but they never tell you how you can solve it. At Flora, we are able to tell you and give you solutions, such as the guided breathing pacer. And third of all, your therapist is able to be connected and see your results. Now, we really different, differentiate from all these other apps as well, because we're not an app that expects the user to go find a quiet place uh, and, and stop what they're doing to become more mindful. Instead, whenever the user is feeling stressed, in that moment, they pull out their app and they practice this breathing exercise. Now, it's recommended that the user practices the exercise morning, midday, and night. So here is our business model. We're a subscription-based model. And as you can see here on the top, so if the therapist has 1 to 45 users, they would pay $39.99. Now, we're trying to get 35 therapists to sign up for this program within our first year. And as you can see on the bottom, for the brackets 100 to 200 and 200 to 300, we're hoping to go into a corporate wellness programs such as LinkedIn or Procore locally, and for them to use this service to help their employees with their productivity. Also, Concerning um, how much it costs per user, to break it down, it's approximately cost one to two dollars uh, for the therapist to, or therapist or the corporate organization to pay um, per person. So these are our financial projections for the fiscal year of 2019 to the fiscal year of 2020. We're expected to double each year. And this is the team and advisory board. And my name's Amanda Morris. I'm the founder and CEO. And the advisors include Mr. Jamie DeVries, Mrs. Jalen Hackman, and Mr. Jeffrey Smith. Now, the funds needed in order to start this venture are $17,000. And you might be saying, that's kind of low because you're developing an app and a website. Well, we plan to get an intern, possibly from USC or UCSB, who is focusing on engineering, and bring them on board this summer so we can start developing as soon as possible. So the use of funds to support our development would be development of the iOS app, and the software technology behind the app and the web system. Thank you so much. So you're covering the development of the technology, but what's the budget for the marketing piece? 
Of course. So marketing right now, we're heavily just focusing on brand awareness and talking to the people within the Santa Barbara community and kind of building it up. Um, marketing so far right now, we haven't allocated a specific amount of money. It's more just like verbal communication, knocking, to the ther knocking on the therapist's door, saying, hey, I've got a product for you. You can solve a lot of your issues and help you with your patients. Um, so that's right now our main approach. Take me how you use this app and how it reads your body rhythms. Okay, of course. So you would go on the app and there'd be a home homepage that says welcome. And then once you've gone on that app, you will put your index finger um, on the camera and the flashlight will also be on. And that actually can read your heart rate variability. So that is the space in the time the amount of time in between, in between each heart rate. And that can measure, that's, the, that's what measures your stress index. Um, and from there, our machines will, our, our not machine, our software will know the correct range if with the user is out of range. So like, of course, 100 to 50 is, out of, is way out of range. And then 50 to 30 is okay, it's, it's, you're not stressed, but you're kind of a little bit in between. Whereas, you know, 40 to zero, it's like, okay, you're calm, you're okay. So, and then from there, after that, if they do get a high level, and the high level will be ranked as either a red heart or a blue heart. So it's a visual component as well, so they can see. And their challenge is to be able to go on the breathing pacer and to be able to try to change those red or blue colored heart to a green heart, which means that you're in the good range, you're, you're, um, you're not as stressed, you've changed your stress index. Thank you. Yes. Um, when you came up with this idea, did you, talk to therapists about this idea and yeah, just go of straight to them? Of course, of course. So um, I have talked to the wellness director at LinkedIn and he's in full support. He loves this idea. He thinks it could be something that could really be beneficial to his employees. And um, I'm in the process of contacting the head of therapy and counseling at UCSB. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness, that was so impressive, everyone. Let's give everyone a hand. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. So great. I got to hand it to the teachers, man. You are doing some awesome work in the classroom, right? Yeah, those teachers, yeah. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is so much about showing up and sticking with it, you know, perseverance, and you clearly demonstrated that. So thank you. It's been an honor to, um, you know, experience the work that you've done so far, truly. So with all that being said, um, I think we're on to giving some awards, right? We are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so judges, um, could you let us know third place, please? This is my fourth time I've been honored to be able to judge this. And I am always in awe of the quality of the work that y'all do. Y'all told me what, y'all, yes, I'm old. I, when I was your age, I couldn't m much less stand up and give a speech in front of um, a class, much less a bunch of strangers and pitch an idea like this. You should all be proud of yourself. And for those who have helped them, please, thank you very much for everything. This is really outstanding, really outstanding. Thank you. There are winners and losers tonight, but you really are all winners. I think yeah, Julie is right. It, the quality was outstanding. It was very hard for us to choose. So even if you're not selected today, just think you might have been just this far away. It really was difficult. You've done a really, really great job. And I've been doing this for about three years now, and this year was, was really, really great. So congratulations to you all for the work you've done. This is my second time judging, and I'm just so blown away because like, I look at like where I was in high school and like I just like was not at the level of, like you guys are at. Like you guys are so intelligent. And like when I was in high school, the only thing I cared about was trying to irritate my little sister. <laughs> so it's really it's really cool to see you know how much you guys have progressed and you know I'm totally
blown away. And seriously, teachers and parents, you need to be proud of all of your children because like, this is incredible. And just to build on that, I'm sorry, since we're on that trend of <laughs> amazement and awe, shock and awe, you know, I gotta say that my reaction to your work that you've done is I'm just oh so relieved actually because there is, let's face it, we know it, l so much uncertainty in the world and, and um, you know, all sorts of things going on that can be really challenging to find what are the solution to those things. And the very skills that you are learning right now are the skills that are gonna enable to <coughs> let your generation move forward and those that are behind you, regardless of what you're facing, you know, that you'll be in the position to think things through and come up with creative solutions. And I gotta tell you, I've, I'm in education and so this is a huge thing of developing the workforce that's gonna be able to sustain us. And I'm just oh so thankful that you are doing what you're doing, so keep going. So did you get enough of that? Do you feel <laughs> obvious enough <laughs> and everything? So without okay. further ado, <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to invite up Natalie and my honey box team there. <laughs> differentiating yourself because of customization of the orders. We thought that was unique and that it made you stand out. Um, also, again, entrepreneurship, sometimes you gotta think about the simplicity of the product. You know, manufacturing is tough. Creating stuff is tough. Taking things and putting them together is much easier and much lower risk. And you have the ability to change out things. So it doesn't quite work, okay, maybe it's not perfume and this, it's something else. So the ability to customize without having to manufacture something I think is also a strong point. The other thing is the viral marketing. You know, I myself, you know, two boys in college and stuff like that, we used to do the packages and stuff like that. You know, John talked about, you know, getting a package and telling other people about it and stuff like that. So we think that the viral marketing piece of this, and that's hard to get. But in a small community like a college and something else like that, it really works well. So again, I think those were the strong pieces and the reason we, you know, wanted you over the stage today. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, our second place is Hinterland. Um, what was really cool about this was that as someone who's slept in hammocks before, it is so easy to fall out. <laughs> it's just like, the, it's like the number one problem and the fact that, you know, you were like, here's the solution. You know, it's super simple and the, the market's, you know, vast enough where you can actually make profitability off of that. And so I admire, you know, you coming up with that solution because I've fallen out of a hammock so many times. <laughs> and it's uh, a few times I've bruised myself. And so I'm really, actually really sh um, shocked that like no one has really figured this out, but it's really cool that you've come along and you say, hey, you know what? I see a problem to a solution. Let's do it. So um, congratulations and you know, pleasure to hear your pitch. Okay, I'm pretty sure we're gonna need a drum roll. Well, right? I was just gonna say, we definitely <laughs> need a drum roll for this one. <laughs> Congratulations to Flora. <laughs> wow, we really, really wanted to commend you on your presentation. Um, your knowledge of um, your idea, uh, you did an outstanding job and you're all on your own, it's great. <laughs> um, uh, also, the data points were really something that we all thought was amazing about your idea and the fact that the counselors could follow their patients 
even when they're not with them and know what's happening. And to have that is really crucial for council. It's, it's a really brilliant idea and we hope you go through with it. Congratulations. Okay, so um, we have to, at this time, um, you know, we know the winners now, but we really need to give a lot of thanks and gratitude to these judges who have devoted their time and are so committed to helping students like you. Thank you, judges, for your time. That's a wrap for the 8th Annual Scheinfeld Center Challenge. Oh.